was a mean and stormy night. The moors were bleak and bloody. Thunder claps, lightning strikes. The fair Clarissa, her clothes in disarray, races across the wild coastal heath. Now she stops. <gasps> now she runs. Will she escape? Will she be caught? With bold determination, the villainous aristocrat, Braxton Prendergast, lurches for her. There's no escape. She's but a child, and yet she turns to fight. With eyes blazing, this noble girl meets his gaze, unafraid. Keep away from me, you wretch! by far my best one yet. If I were going to be a writer, I'd go to New York and pursue the stage. Feisty heroines battling evil men. The way it should be. Amy, do you think you can discipline yourself to learn at home as Beth has done? Why, it's an appalling school. Your spelling's atrocious, Latin absurd. Marmy has already withdrawn you from that scoundrel school. I will now supervise your education and name a better place to start. The first rule about writing is to never write about what you know. People like thrilling stories. It's all the rage. And this is a thrilling piece of writing and a melodrama perfectly fit for us March girls. Well, that's my opinion, but I'm not surprised you think otherwise. You know I hate writing about love and marriage. I rather crave violence. A great battle where the odds are twisted and unexpected. A strong and courageous warrior standing up to the lines of injustice. It makes me feel like father. Unlike love, which quite frankly is dull as powder. Not to mention it tears people apart. Oh, you have so much to learn. Why do people have to get married? Why can't things just stay as they are? You're a ninny penny if your only goal is to marry. It's like being stuck with the dreadful nose you get. You become nothing other than a decoration with ladylike features. Oh, imagine it. An itchy frock, turned up hair, and fancy gloves made of Brussels lace. All I'm saying is, if you feel your value lies in being merely decorative, I fear that someday you may find yourself believing that's all you really are. Don't you want to be something more? I want to do something splendid before I go into my castle. Something heroic or wonderful that won't be forgotten after I'm dead. Oh, I want passion. I want people to like me because I'm unique, not because of some silly sash. Oh, I hate to think that I've got to grow up and be Miss March and wear long gowns and look as prim as China Aster. It's bad enough being a girl. Oh, why couldn't I have been born like father? Destined for a life of great significance. At least, late at night, my mind comes alive with voices and stories. Brave heroines and mighty warriors who look danger right in the face and laugh. Oh, how these stories make me feel like, like I belong with friends as dear to me as any in the real world. And happy as I am. And I love my liberty too well to give it up for any mortal man. Did I tell you? I'm going to Europe. Well, at least I think I am. Aunt March says she'll go one of these days, and well, she has to take me. After all, I am her companion. I have to read to her for hours and hours on end. But I do all the voices. I'll astonish you someday. Years from now, I'm going to become a world-renowned writer. I shall write great books and earn barrels of money. Down at the Eagle, they pay five dollars for every story they print. Well, I have ten stories in my head right now. 
I shall take care of the marches. We can all go back to the way it was. Father will come home. We'll be young and free to be whoever we want to be. Ah, let's do the painting scene. You're stiff as a poker in that, Amy. It's easy if you only watch me. Now, when I come in, you'll see the sinister look in my eyes. You'll draw back, trembling with fear. Get in the mood, Amy, get in the mood. <laughs> well done, Amy, now, now. When I start towards you with wicked intentions, you'll shrink back, covering your eyes with your hands. Federigo, Federigo, save me, save me! See? There you are now. It's easy. <laughs> 